Yo, what is up? Joshua Casper here with another very exciting Ableton Live video tutorial. Today we're going to be making this bass rack, and as usual, it's for a free download over there on the blog. All I ask is that you rate, subscribe, and comment, and share. Sharing is very important. Um, that's all I ask. It's not a lot. Some people think it is, but it's definitely not a lot. Um, so I've got this bass line. I'm going to turn this rack off, and it's just a bass. Uh, I'm not going for any sort of musical ability. It's just a bass straight out of Massive from some random patch, and this is what it sounds like. Cool, huh? Now, when I take this bad boy right here and turn it on, it's going to fatten up the sound. It's going to push out some of the um, side frequencies, make it a little bit fatter, wider sounding. And I've also got some um, eight macro knobs that are going to help me, you know, make the sound a little bit more interesting, I guess you would say. And uh, I'm just going to turn it on and you're going to instantly hear how much fatter it sounds. So here we go. So you can hear what I've got, uh, what it does. It just, it, it, um, it's doing a lot actually. It's cutting off the very low end. Um, I'm actually taking out some of the low to mid frequencies to kind of get rid of the mud sound. I'm boosting the high end. And then I've also got a set of filters um, kind of on here, just random spots. And I can control where those are and what they do and stuff like that. And I think that's pretty neat, if you ask me, if you can see what I'm doing here. Um, and I've set them up so they're not going to come down to the sub, so you're never going to be peeking and getting crazy out there. Um, also, I've got the gain set up so it's never going to go too high, as you can see here. And also, I've got a scale feature so I can invert the sides if I want, so left to right. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And if you go right in the middle, then obviously it's right in the middle. And I've got a limiter on there so we don't peak. And I've also got it set up. I've got the gain mapped out so we can make it louder and softer or quieter as we want. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool if you ask me. So this is what the, uh, the after kind of EQ looks like. And you're going to have to go in if you really want to get nitpicky and do this to each one of your bass sounds, but I think it's a good place just to get started. Just like any, any kind of preset is, it's a nice little rack to just drop on your track and instantly hear how your sound can be better. Um, this is on the mid side mode, so I've got the mid kind of mirroring the actual um, I've got the side, excuse me, EQ mirroring the mid EQ right now, but from these macro knobs, I can give the nice little push to the high end of that mid bass, and I can adjust how much of the mid, or I mean the sub, I am cutting off, all from the uh, nice eight bars or macro knobs here. So what we're going to do today is go ahead and make this. I'm going to have to do it quickly so the video doesn't take, you know, half an hour. But uh, I'm going to throw this version, which I find is the best version that I've made, up online. So, sweet. I'm going to go just go ahead and save that. Overwrite. Cool. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is drop an EQ on there. Or you can just drop the, an effects rack on there. It doesn't really matter. Um, and what I'm going to do is turn this off. And I'm going to turn it on the mode to left, right. And this is what kind of makes it a little bit of a wider, fatter sound. And I'm only going to use three kind of notch filters here. And let's go ahead and group this to a um, effects rack. And click on this and Mac to Macro 1. Uh, click here, Map to Macro 1. Click here, right click, Map to Macro 1. And right now they're all doing the same thing. So we're going to use map mode to come in and kind of push them out like this. Okay? Sweet. And the next thing we're going to do is the Q. So I'm going to come over to number three here and um, here, boom. And why isn't my Q working? Oh, not the Q, excuse me. I want to. Uh, I want my cue to be nice and you know looking like this, but I want to map the gain to macro two. Here, I want the cue up, 
map the gain to macro two here, queue up, gain to map macro two. And now look at here we go. And I'm gonna come into map and I wanted to go from zero to fifteen. So I'm just gonna type in zero, zero, zero. Cool. And you can take that uh, maximum and pull it down too. That's what I did on the original, just because I don't ever want there to be too much. I want this to be kind of a subtle effect. So let's see. That looks about right. So we'll go up to 7 dB. Cool. Let's bring the Q in just a little bit more on all of those. Or those, those two. And then come into the left to do the same thing. Frequency, I'm going to go to 5 for all of them, Boom. five, and I'm also going to come in to map mode, and I'm going to move them over to kind of mirror, mirror these top three here, so, cool, 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 and come out, and the gain, I'm going to come in, boom, oh, and I actually have these reversed, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the numbers are not important. So I'm going to come into macro 6. Oh, and you see what I have here? I don't have a notch filter. I want a notch filter on all three of these. Boom. Come into, again, turn the queue up. Cool. Gain. And one more. Gain. To 6. So now, perfect. Come into map mode, I want to go negative 7 to 0, which is the inverse of what we had. So, 0, negative 7, 0. Cool. Get out of here, and I got to pull that queue up again. Pull that queue up again. And let's pull the queue up again a little bit too. Cool. Okay. Um, and let's come back in and just kind of get it mirrored. Or actually, let's not. Let's leave it like that. Cool. Um, next thing we're going to do is map this scale to macro 7. And that way we can get that left to right sign, kind of flipping the audio spectrum there. That's cool. And that's all we're going to do for that. And then what next thing we're going to do is drop another EQ8 on the end here. And I'm going to turn this one on mid side. And on this mid one, I'm going to pull this over, kind of boost it up. And I'm going to pull on Q. And on this one, I want a notch filter. Just to kind of demud that bass a little bit, and then on the four, bring the frequency over, and then map four gain to macro four, and map the one low cut frequency to macro three. And that way we can control the low cut, how much of the subs being cut, and on four, we want to nice be able to kind of boost up that high end on that mid bass because sometimes it's not where it should be. And also we can come into map mode and on macro four, um, turn the, the minimum to zero because we never want to cut that low end. I mean that high end. So that's pretty cool. And actually we can turn off three. And the next thing we can do is come into side mode and we always never want there to be side frequency sub and we always kind of want to have a nice little highlight out here on this end. So that looks pretty good. And again, I mean, I say it over and over again because I think it's so important. You need to come in and fine tune stuff when you're actually making like a, you know, a track that's going to be your pride and joy. But these are definitely a good place to start. You don't want to have to map all that out every time you do something. So that's looking pretty good. And the next thing I'm going to do is come into my limiter. Just drop that on here and map that gain to macro 8 and pull it up to about, I don't know, 3. 
And that is more or less the rack that I'm going to throw up online. I'm going to use the one that I professionally, uh, not professionally, <laughs> I am not Ableton certified, clearly. But um, I'm going to throw the one that I made before up because I can't hear the left channel when I'm recording these videos because I have a micro microphone headpiece in there. And it's all messed up. I have to record super ghetto. But I can't hear the left, so I don't know how well it sounds. But I know this is pretty much what I did. The method is there. And if you followed along, you're going to be close to what I'm going to give you guys online. But, uh, you know, it's important to know how what's under the hood of these things. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's uh, the mastering rack. And let's see if I can hear how good it is. Yeah, I mean, I can even hear that with only one... Uh, only the right channel that that already sounds a lot better but anyway um, I hope you learned something rate subscribe comment and I will see you next time